Remember that? Remember when it was uh, when reaching the internet was an achievement? When that sound always came up and I explained to people what the internet is, and my my thing was always like, when it sounds like everything is broken, then you're online. <laughs> and it's a bit like looking at Facebook the last few weeks, like everything's broken and I'm online. But Reaching the internet was an achievement. It was something that I had to work for. Okay, it wasn't hard, but you connected the cables and you knew where everything went. And we started liking the internet because of that, because we put effort in. If we get something for free, we don't appreciate it. If we get something with a little effort, we appreciate it much more. That's why paying people a lot of money for things they don't want to do doesn't work. It pay, uh, you can pay them less if they're happy. So that's an interesting part there. And I wonder if you cared more about the internet when it was harder to reach, when it was harder to do, and especially when it was slower, when, it, when we understood the impact of what we uploaded, when we understood the impact of what we, what we downloaded, when it took ages to do something. And <coughs> I also wonder if we stopped caring. We talked about just right now how important it is for some people to be online, but for us it's like, well, it's just another thing. And... Uh, I wondered about this, what to do about this keynote when it's always like, do something about the state of the internet, okay? Um, and I wondered, what if the internet were a person? And in America, we know that, that corporations are people. At one time, they said that, and I still don't understand what they meant by that. But if the internet were a person, I think it won't be in a good state. I think it's going to be pretty depressed right now and pretty in between wondering what's going on. And that's why I thought it would be interesting for me to play the psychiatrist of the internet and ask it what it's doing and what's going on. So this is me as a psychiatrist. Well, hello again, internet. How are we doing today? Not good, and I just don't know why. It's not that you feel threatened again, is it? No, that's over. That's a thing of the past. Uh, people talked about these... It was a bit scary for me when people talked about apps all the time and said that the internet is not important anymore. But the good thing is right now that nobody talks about apps anymore. They just became another consumer good that nobody cares much for. And people don't download apps anymore. They just use what is on their phone. They use their Facebook, their WhatsApps, their Google searches. Their, their, nobody downloads apps any longer. And I think the reason for that was that apps were too, were too pushy. They all wanted to be your thing. They wanted to be your internet. And they want updates every two days. They want your data all the time. They nag you with notifications all the time. And people didn't want that. Apps also told you that they're like Tamagotchi. You know, they, they please feed me, give me your data, give me your data, upload your photos here. You can't upload photos from me to somewhere else. They just like feed me, feed me, do me things. And people didn't want to do that anymore because we have enough on our plates already. And other apps told you even that you're in the wrong country. And that makes no sense at all. I, as the internet, I was always without borders. I didn't care where you are. I didn't care what disability you had. I didn't care what technology you had. You were invited. You were happy to work with me. And I think that's the reason why people come back to me, and I'm happy to embrace them, and I'm happy to see people coming back to me, the internet. Well, it's a good thing, isn't it? Sure it is, but um, I feel bad. I don't think I make a difference any longer. People see me as a given, they see me as plumbing, and they're not interested in how I work. We don't care what a tap works like. We just open it and water comes out. We only complain about it when the water doesn't come out, or when it's not clean, or when we have to clean the sink, but it really, we don't care what water is, and people don't care what the internet is. Most kids don't know what offline means. There is no offline, we're just slower online, faster online all the time. And they don't see me as somebody to talk to and create things with me. They just want to consume what others do on me. Netflix, let's watch movies. It's not interactive TV. I cannot change the outcome of the show. I just watch the show. And then I go to Facebook and people talk about Game of Thrones. And I go to Twitter and people talk about football. And I'm like, where are, where, why, when did people stop talking about me and with me? When did people stop creating things? And much like running clear water, most people don't understand that it isn't a normal thing for everybody. It is actually a privilege to talk to the internet and to talk to it freely. Having connectivity is hard for a start, 
but then being able to not be censored by your governments while you're talking is another privilege that people don't understand they have. And we're not using this privilege the right way. I want to matter. I want to be known as a great person to talk to. I want to be known as a savior, as somebody that helps people. I want to be the internet of the people, not the internet of products and the internet of TV shows. Oh dear, sounds like in the middle of a midlife crisis. Promise me you won't do anything stupid like buying a fancy sports car to feel better. Well, I don't wanna, but people do it. I have no choice. People keep pushing me into things, things I never meant to be in. People give me a face that I don't need. They, they don't understand that I'm there for them in any way, form or shape, but they put me into all kinds of things I thought I never needed to be in. But it must feel good, doesn't it? Change is good. You want, to be, you want to be better, you want to be new, you don't want to be the same person for the next 50 years. Sure, uh, of course, but it feels that people don't realize I'm... It's good that people feel that real, uh, realize that I'm flexible enough to run anything, but I don't want to start something commercial all the time. There's a few issues. I don't want to power things that... I want to power things that solve issues. I want to help people with their things. I don't want to do things that are pure commercialism. Nowadays, you can call anything smart and you can sell it. Yesterday, I saw an umbrella that actually read if the, it's going to be raining. Don't need that. Will it, ca will it count the, the, the drops and ask me how many drops it saved me from? That's just stupid. When people talk about Internet of Things, uh, it's mostly inconveniences of the rich. It's not real problems. When I look at keynotes of like embedded devices in your house that tell you, like, what's the weather like? Why don't you look out of the window? You know, it's rich people's problems that just don't appreciate computers anymore and realize they should do more for me. Let's track how many things I walk during the day while I'm ordering everything on Uber and get it delivered to my house. There are a few things that I like to power. I'm great at monitoring things and telling you if something breaks before it breaks. That's what me as the Internet of Things should be for. This is great. If, if, uh, if a company that does escalators and lifts saves a lot of money by knowing when their machines are going to break down, when a, a car company realizes that your car needs to go into repair before it breaks down and, and gives, gets you stuck, that's exactly what I'm for. That's exactly what I should be doing. Most things I'm pushed into are borderline silly and made to break. It's pure commercialism. It's just products that you buy and discard and there's computer waste in there and there's batteries in there. Like my hydrate smart hydration system records how much water you drink each day. Just open the tap. You live in a country where it's clean enough to drink. The weather in the water in Stockholm is great. You don't need that bottle to repeat to you like, oh, you should drink something. It records data. All of these things record data all the time, and someone wants that data. It doesn't go back to the owner of these things. It goes somewhere in the cloud. And some the, the owners get a little graph, and they basically understand that, ooh, look, that's my data. That's how many steps I did. But they're being monitored all the time, and they send this data through me, and I get dizzy from all that data. I'm like, there's so much stuff coming in in various formats that I never understood. And the worst is that people connect things to me without considering the consequences. Just lately, a lot of things ganged up on me and took down a large bit of me for a while. Didn't went down because of cameras and because of thermometers in the house and thermostats and Internet of Things devices that were set up without a password. Instead of telling people, this is your device, you put it in your house, it's monitoring you, put a, f put a fat password on there, something only you know, Nobody's gonna know that the password is one, two, three, four, right? Nobody knows that kind of stuff. So that the internet could be taken down by thermostats and cameras and light bulbs. Like five years ago, if somebody had told me that, they would be like, yeah, science fiction bollocks. Nobody's gonna care about that. That's not gonna happen. So it seems to me you feel misused and somehow underappreciated. Yeah. I think many bored of me, of me. They want me to be flashier. They want me to do different things. VR, AR, mixed reality. This is where the internet is going right now. And I don't like that because the world is around us. We have one world. We've got one planet to live on for now. And going into a virtual world that is made for us, of course, is enticing. It's great. 
but it's a few rich people that can do it, a few people who want to escape into an own world. I'd rather people use me to in change the world around them and to turn them into interfaces, fine, to interact with it, but not to go into a 3D world and that can be consumed without effort. I'm not like this. I'm here to connect people, to help collaborative work. I want to be known to help people to talk to each other, not everybody else to go into an own virtual world. But that's what people do, isn't it? People create more data than ever. If you look at the statistics, they, they push images into you, they record things, they be creative on YouTube, they do great stuff. It's true, maybe. It could be. I think I am needed. People talk to me. That's true. People also take photos and upload them to me and send them to me. But what I've found in the last few years is that compared to when we started uploading photos on the internet, nobody describes them. I don't get explanations. I don't know what these photos are. People communicate to each other with photos. They don't do any descriptions. They don't, uh, they don't even say when they were taken. They don't care if they find them later on. We consume and consume and consume and push things and push things and push things. And people just give me stuff without telling me what it is. And I'm standing there, okay, I store it for you, but if you can't find it anymore, why did you post that? Being first and getting, qu getting quick things out and quick likes is more important. They're adding stuff over and over and over again. The repetitiveness of it makes me sick. The same photo 60 million times on Imager, sorry, on Imager, because people don't check if it has already been posted. No, it has been posted. Don't give me that picture again. Point to that picture. That's what the web is about. That's what links are about. So people talk to you and it's meaningless. Do you feel like all you get is small talk? Well, I wish there was small talk. Uh, people have no idea how I work, and they upload the weirdest formats to me. You know, videos get converted into GIFs, so GIFs show up on every device, and then they are huge, and then the display sites display them again as videos to convert them back and forth. Both of those send data to each other in the worst format possible, and we just love about it for two seconds, and we had eight megabyte of data sent around the internet, making me feel woozy and making me feel weird. They have no empathy of, of well how well connected other people are. Like, we upload it because it's fast on your computer. If the other person takes like 20 minutes to see the thing, and then there was a kitten falling over, that was a waste of their time and a waste of their money. If, if people are remotely, or if people are uh, actually not in their country and use their data plans, it can get really, really expensive looking at useless things. And they don't contain any information. They don't, they, there's no explanation for us saying like, this is a picture of a kitten, when you download it? No, we just send it and hope the other person is as connected as we are. When it comes down to it, I'm stupid. I, the internet, am stupid, and that's why I'm still around. I cannot break, I'm so simple. I don't retain things, I just transport things. And I don't care what format they are, that's what browsers do for you, that's what machines do for you. But I'm just there as a distributed system that nobody owns, that's why I survived all the other things. The ones using me to get information from humans use intelligence systems. They try to decipher what it all means. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, all these really cool things, they don't understand what people upload, so they have to find computers to find information into these things, because sooner or later, they want to know what people uploaded. Take the chat systems you talked about. People chat to me all the time. These nowadays analyze images and turn them into words. They detect faces, they detect emotions, they detect, they detect text. And this data goes somewhere, I don't know where, and most of the users don't care. They just want to have a chat system. They don't mind if the thing spies on them, they just want to have a chat system. These systems then mimic human communication and give recipient intelligent answers to choose from. Isn't that cool? Like somebody uploads a picture of, uh, of Linguini and the other computer says like, mm, Linguini, please choose an answer. You don't even have to think about it any longer. And this is kind of weird, isn't it? Because if you think about it, people use me to communicate with other people and use language created for them by machines. So instead of using us, humans are becoming the transport mechanism for machines to talk to each other and mine data in between. 
There's no creativity there. We don't even talk anymore. I'm actually happy when somebody makes a grammar mistake because I know it was a human for a change. This applies to almost all content of the web. It's crazy. Algorithms write news. People don't write news anymore. You're not in control of what's being shown to you on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Some clever algorithm showed that. And it was funny when, when Facebook just fired their trending team and then the algorithm went completely haywire and terrible things came out of it and they had to rehire humans again because we realized human communication is messy. It's not what computers are meant to do. So why do you think it is? Why do you think people still don't care about other people writing news via algorithmic things so good? It's pretty simple, it's speed, constant change. Always new, always more, always more optimized. People don't take time to verify things. It sickens me. Fake news are a big problem because they sound cooler. Let's click on them. Let's not use Snopes.com and analyze what the thing is. Let's not think about it, just get further in there. You might get a like for it, that's amazing much better than, than not lying to people. Why do you care? You're the internet, you shouldn't really. This is, why do you care? What's the problem with that? You're right, maybe I shouldn't be bothered. Maybe I'm like, fine, use me any way you want. I'm stupid, I'm just sending data around. But the problem is I don't feel good. I feel slow and I feel sluggish. I feel like I should be better for people. I feel full somehow. Take a tweet. 140 letters, right? Or in this case, how big is this? Not even 140 letters. Sending this to somebody else and loading that URL is three megabyte of code. Three megabyte of JavaScript, HTML, CSS for 140 characters. That makes me fat, that makes me feel bad. Because if you want to talk to everybody, I'm, I'm too big for them. I'm fed too much sugar, too much carbs, too much fat, which is called ads, which is called things that people want end users to have without the end users knowing it. The average website is 2.4 megabyte with 220 HTTP requests. That's insane, if you think about it. I was, I've heard from people in, uh, people in Albania, for example, on roaming, 12 pound per megabyte. So looking at this website would be the same as going to the cinema. This is not what websites are supposed to be. Most of the new people who are eager to meet me will never get me because they can't afford me. They can't afford a website of 2.4 megabyte. For them, it's actually a large amount of money just to go on the internet and every byte is a prisoner. Every byte has to count and not be something there. Of course, the company that does tweets or Facebook or whatever else or every other company out there wants to give users the functionality as soon as possible. That's why this data is there. But it feels kind of more sinister to me because all of them start locking people in. It's like all of them have a browser built in. So if you click a link in one of these systems, you stay in that system. You're never going back to the browser. You're never going back to the other systems on your device. You never go to other resources on the internet. Everything becomes one thing. They try to trap you inside one application. And I'm meant to be loosely connected network of things. I'm meant not to be one thing on your machine. I'm meant to be lots of services that give you information, that talk to each other, that go to each other. Clicking a link goes away from your system to something else. That's why I'm so sturdy. That's why I survived everything else. It's not three megabytes for 140 characters. It should be snappy. It should be something going back to each other, talking over APIs, whatever. People don't, still don't get that about me. Maybe it's because I got two fathers and no mother. Some people get angry about that and don't understand it. Maybe a woman's touch would have made a better system, but it's too late for that. But more women in me, with me, would be great probably to understand that humans are diverse and not only white men that do one thing. I think the worst about it though is that I'm almost in my 30s and I still haven't got any income. I don't make any money. I don't have any money on my own. What do you mean by that? I mean, millions of dollars on the internet, right? Gold rush, startups, blah, whatever. You have money, right? No, I don't. There seems to be no way to make money with me. All everybody else is show ads and products for products and services people may or may not buy. 
People don't pay for me, they pay for access for me, but they don't pay for services. They pay for something else that they might get, and most of the time it's just ads being displayed. The problem is, if you ask for money to access something on the internet, people will not use it. Or they find an illegal version of it and delete it after 24 hours, because then it's legal, right? We raised a whole generation of people who don't understand that the web is free to create on, but not free to consume. Things that other people did, somebody should get paid for sooner or later, but people don't understand that. They just want it free and then have some ads maybe shown that they can ignore. Ads are making me sick and obese. Many of them don't stop at showing people products. They spy on people who use me, mine how they interact with things, and sell that data to others. In the past, only people who use me for criminal purposes did that. You know, ransomware, blackmail. But now every single website does that. Every ad that you have, your data goes somewhere with you without knowing it. And you think that everything is for free. It's not. Your data goes somewhere. You're being sold to somebody. Well, can't you do anything about it? You're the internet, right? You connect people. You should be fine. Well, I can't, but some people try. There's ad blockers, there's new browsers that remove ads, there's proxy services that actually take the big fat internet and make it smaller and give it to people on their machines so they can consume it. And that's kind of cool, but it feels to me like a laxative. You know, I still need to consume all of that and then they remove it. That's not a healthy way of losing weight. We should not have this data on me in the beginning. We should just delete it before we actually go there. And some of them have nasty side effects. You never know who watches the watchman. So there was an add-on to the browser that now was found out to sell all the data in the background to other people. So who, we block you from the evil people because we're the good ones and now our money has run out, now we sell your data as well. Who to trust? Who watches the watchman? That's dangerous. That's okay. What do you need to feel better? You feel like you're angry, you're unhappy. I want to communicate with humans again. I want to see real content. I want to see human interactions and real emotions, not likes and happy things and like retweeting things that are funny because likes. I don't want to have predictable creativity and quick chuckles. I'm, I'm, I'm drowning in memes. I'm drowning in pictures that already have the joke in them before you send them out. This is not clever. This is not creative. This is just people doing things over and over and over again. I want people to use me for what I was meant to do. Real communication and real creativity. Do wild things with me. Do things that people don't expect. Just don't do the things that like, oh, gives you the most likes and is du jour the cool thing to do. Yeah, you said that already. What's stopping you? What is your problem? How, how come you cannot get people inspired to do so? Well, there's two kinds of people. There's those who know my weaknesses and use me to attack others and bully them. Trolls. It makes me really sick and I find disappointing that those who act out of malice are better than the others. Those people know how to use me. Those people know how to, to use a system, hide themselves in anonymity. Those are the ones that destroy any communication between humans, but they're darn good at it because they have no other things on their mind. That's what they do. That's their hobby. That's their cool thing to do. I'm, I'm terrible on the internet. Yay for me. And the other kind of people are those who don't care. They have me, but they just don't understand that I could bring prosperity, information and creativity to the whole world and not only to the Western world of rich people on $600 phones that get told you need a new phone because your phone is too slow. Care about me, think about me, do cool things in me and, and you will see that you find people everywhere in the world that are interesting. I need to lose weight and I need to be more open to everybody out there again not dependent on a shiny and well-connected consumption device. If your website times out on a 3G connection, you probably haven't used me. You just used your own infrastructure and thought that's the world. I'm worldwide. Let me be worldwide. And let me be inviting for people again. So what you're saying is you're stuck between bullies and sheep. Well, that's your words, not mine. I actually like people. Some of my best friends are people. And I want to keep empowering them. I want to be there for people. And 
I'm here. You can use me any way you want. Please don't use me to bully others. Please don't use me to, to, to chase your own virtual identity rather than being yourself. However, if we don't act now, those who always try to control me will have won. Not because they're good at it, but because intelligent, kind and good people of the web allowed the hooligans to take over. Governments trying to control me, companies trying to control me, do so because of the terrible people and to make it safe for security. Think of the children. Well, think of your own children. Think how they use the internet. Be part of this. Be part of them in their education. Show them how beautiful I am as a resource to learn things. Governments want to control me very, very terribly right now. And when I see, for example, what the UK is doing, I'm not afraid of China anymore. There's not much difference there. And this is a free country. This is a country where people have the choice and where people have a free education and should be fighting for me, but they don't because they're happy to watch Netflix and wonder if the next Game of Thrones things comes out. You sound kind of worried. I do, I am, we all should be. This is not a time to be silent. This is not a time to behave. This is a time that needs rebels. Encrypt what you can. Help people encrypt what they can. Consume the right things. Question authority, question whatever you read on the web and tell people off for disseminating the wrong information. Tell people off for misusing me tell people off for uh, and, and support people who want to use me the right way. We need rebels right now, and rebels are those that use intelligent words, proper grammar, kindness and empathy for other people, and are not afraid to show that online. This is what we need right now. People use their words, their kindness and their willingness to teach others the benefits of using me rather than consuming through me. Maybe there are quite a few here today who listen to me, and help me to get fit and happy again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've, uh, you spent some of your speech uh, blasting umbrellas that feel if it's raining or <laughs> a connected doughnuts and memes. Why do you hate fun? <laughs> I don't hate fun, I love fun, but I love fun with other humans. I don't, I don't, well, I mean, I would love to have this umbrella as a kit that I can build together with my kids and explain them how it works. I don't think it should be a $300 umbrella that people use. And I mean, I would love, uh, it doesn't have irony in it, you know, it, it just is like a, a smart umbrella. If it really would count the raindrops and then tell me I protected you from so many drops a day and I compare it to other friends, that would be interesting again, to a degree. But it's just a, like, we make it smart because we could put a computer in there. And I'm more worried about the security aspect of it. If the umbrellas of this world are the next thing to build a botnet, then we have a real issue. It, it would, the Internet of Things is lacking the human factor, so we keep trying to do that. I was wondering if you had smart genes and you go online and you look at other genes, will they start tweeting you? They're like, should we talk? <laughs> Why are you looking at other genes? Uh, I was more thinking if my genes would tell me that they don't fit anymore. You seem to have gained weight. Maybe you should, you know, replace There is me. a smart belt that actually does that. Oh, no. It shows you every millisecond <laughs> oh. what's, what the change of your, of your thing is. You're like, I don't want to know, you know, I was just enjoying the Semmler. I was like, this, this is the thing. Yes. We, we buy things to... Uh, 1984 had all these cameras everywhere, and I think the only thing he did not predict is that we're going to buy the devices that spy on us and spend money on them. It's really bizarre. We make it so easy for her uh, uh, horrible people to use our data because we give out far too much for fake internet points and likes and these kind of so things. The, the robot uprising would look less like Terminator and more like that smart belt that one day just chokes us when we're putting it on. I gave a lot of talks about machine learning lately and I always compare Star Trek and Terminator because Terminator is always like the future where robots kill us and stuff and robots wouldn't kill us. There's no point to that. They would use us as data, in data sources and they would do things with us or enslave us, but they wouldn't kill us because there's no point to that. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. yeah. But Star Trek had uh, ubiquitous computing. Computing was just there for us and we're there. We're almost there. At the th all the things you saw in Star Trek in 1999, 1991, 92, we have now. We mm -hmm. have in our pockets. We don't appreciate it because we realize it's just a normal thing. What we forgot that Star Trek has is moving humanity along as well past the need for money, past the need for like uh, uh, massive 
uh, structures. This is what we didn't do. We now have the, uh, we will lose 80% of our jobs to computers in the next five years. That's a fact, that's not even a question anymore. So the best way to be not replaced by the Amazons of this world right now is to invest in your people. Make it more human again. We need to be realizing that these things are there for us, not for us to feed them with data all the time. Thank you very much. I hope you will appreciate uh, our Thank gift. You. Where did you go? This robot uh, hopefully will not <laughs> strangle you in your sleep. Hey. Uh, instead, this robot is built uh, by us to encourage more children to learn about the internet and hopefully not build smart Aww. refrigerators, but something else instead. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. it's got an Arduino inside it. Yes. Cool. If you, if you live here, by the way, every Saturday inside the Spotify office, there's Code Club for Kids. So if you want to go with your kids to learn coding, you can do that and it's volunteers running that as well. Right. Or you can join one of our initiatives at barnhack.se. Any of them. Any, yes. of, Any them. of them will do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.